Hi, I'm Beth. Welcome to this video. This yoga class is going to be a chair yoga practice with the entire practice, all of the poses performed seated in a chair. You'll want a chair that is sturdy, ideally without arms. A chair back is fine, so you can sit strong and upright in your chair. I'm not going to be using other props in this practice, but I welcome you to have them. In fact, if when you're sitting on the edge of your chair like I am, your feet don't comfortably touch the floor, simply put the feet on a blanket or blocks, anything to bring the floor a little closer up to you. And feel free to incorporate props to make the practice more your own. That is functional yoga, where the practice is adjusted to your body, not the other way around. All right, so the focus of today's practice is we're going to be working the spine in all six directions that we can work it, and I'll explain that to you as we're going along. And then we'll also get a little bit of hip and hamstring in there. So this is going to be gentle, yet a little bit active practice, staying in the chair the entire time. Ready? We're going to start with a little bit of forward back bending, a seated cat cow in the chair. So take your hands out up in front of you, palms toward me. Bend your elbows back as you allow your chest to come forward, chin to come up. So you're arching your back, drawing your shoulder blades together. This is your seated cow pose. And then as you move your hands forward, push the hands away from you, pulling the shoulder blades apart. Your back rounds as your chin comes toward your chest, crown of the head a little bit toward me, and that's cat. And then continue between these two poses at your own pace, feeling as how you pull your arms back, that's your back bend. And as you pull or push the arms forward, a little bit of hinge at the hips, that's your forward fold. And keep going, this is a warm up for our spine, moving it in the first two directions it can go in, back bending and forward bending. It might feel really nice if you're doing this practice in the morning or if your spine is stiff at all. See if you can coordinate your movement with your breath. And it doesn't matter which way you breathe or how you breathe, but thinking about the breath. So I'm gonna exhale as I push my arms forward, allowing all that air to leave my body. Inhale as I draw my arms back, expand across my chest. And I'll do one more in each direction. So one more big inhale. And one more big exhale. And then come back to your upright position. And you do want to be on the edge of the chair for most of these poses. The distance apart between your feet, it might be your mountain pose if you're standing on the floor standing upright, so about hip width, but if you prefer your feet a little wider, a little closer together, it's all good. All right, so next we're gonna do a little bit of a lateral bending. So lateral side to side, those are the next two directions that the spine is going to go in. I'll be mirroring you, so take your left ear and move it toward your left shoulder. Now keep your shoulders soft, so we're not reaching the shoulders up to reach the ear. Gentle strikes that you're starting to feel on the opposite side, on your right side. Then take your same hand as next, so your left hand, dangle it toward the ground, and begin to let your body stretch in that direction. Feeling a stretch along the opposite side, your right side. Now, if as you do this, your hip starts to lift off the chair, that's not wrong. If you allow your hip to settle back down, as you go over, you might feel more of a stretch on the side. So see how that feels for you. You can even try lifting it on purpose and then settling it back down. And then slowly bring your body back up and you see we're not going really far. We're gonna do this again. The first we'll do the other side. So right ear toward right shoulder. We're not trying to touch the shoulder, just trying to move in that direction. And it's fine if you wanna move the head around a little bit too. Sometimes ah, you can feel a little stiffness somewhere in there as you move. I'm going to rest my left hand on my left thigh, right hand dangles, and start to use that dangle as if I had a weight there slowly dragging my body. I'm going to let my opposite hip lift for a second intentionally, and then again, settle it back down. You can use your hand to help with that and feel the stretch along the rib cage, opening the oblique muscles on the left side. And come back up. 
Now this time we're going to do the lateral stretch again, but as we bend over, we're going to think of trying to keep both sides long. To assist with that, this time I'm going to support my neck. So I'm going to take my left hand behind the left ear. We're going in that direction, the direction your elbow is pointing in. So think about side bodies long, both side ribs get length, and then with that length, leaning over. So you're kind of more of a, a straight lean, if that makes sense, less of a crunch on this side, but more of a lean. Still keeping the opposite hip down. And now actually I'm feeling that lower. I'm feeling it more toward my side waist. You might feel it in a different place, that's totally fine. You're seeking out the stretch that makes sense for you. And that might be a little forward, a little back. And then now you can use your hand to help your head, your whole side body up, give it a little shake out and we'll go to the other side. So remember your left hand supporting right around the ear, maybe more toward the temple, wherever feels comfortable for you. And then as you're ready, side bodies long and then lean, trying to keep both sides as just as long as when you were upright keeping the hip down. And again, you can use your hand as a little reminder, hip down, stretch. And when you get there, you can even do more of a length stretch. Can you get more length? Can you yield a stretch between the ribs? Get into those little intercostal in addition to the side obliques. And then breathe and come back up. All right, next, this is the last direction of the spine. So we did forward, back, we did side to side, that's four directions. The last direction is twisting. With twisting, again, we did the lateral stretch first because it's really important to have that upright length of the side body before we start to twist. So we're gonna start with an upright twist and you might think of this twist from the belly button up, sort of ringing out through your spine. Take a nice breath. And then as you exhale, begin to turn toward your left. Again, thinking about that from above the belly button, through the lower ribs, through the upper ribs, that's your whole thoracic spine, keeping your chin centered on chest to start, drawing your left shoulder blade back, and then your right hand can come and rest on the thigh, left hand to the back of the chair, to the rest of the chair, as a support and maybe just a gentle pull, but not a hard pull. And then you notice I kept my chin right in the center of my chest, once you get here, you can see how your neck feels. And if it feels like you the neck wants to turn into this twist, you can turn it. If it feels as if the neck is overstretching, you might consider turning the neck back the opposite way. And oh, that feels good. We don't do that very often. And then one more breath in this twist, slowly untwist toward the front, and we'll prepare for the second side. Breathe length into your body, long and upright. And then start to turn that spiral staircase from the bottom up. And you can, I like to use my hands as a prop. It helps as a reminder to me of what I'm doing. Right shoulder starts to come back, right shoulder blade comes back as left comes forward, chin stays centered, hands drop to wherever feels good and supportive. Maybe a little gentle pull with that back hand, nothing forced and then decide where does your neck feel good. On this side, it might be very different. You can play with looking over your shoulder. You can see how it feels to go back to the opposite side. And then another breath. And when you're ready, back through to center. All right, this is the only pose that we're going to scooch toward the back of the chair, and we're going to do a back bend using the backrest of the chair. So slide your body back. Hopefully you are on the edge like I am. Breathe in and get length. Back bends at another time we need length. Put your hands on your waist for a second and feel as if you're lifting everything in your torso above. So you're kind of pushing your hips down, seated, rooted in your chair, and lifting everything else up tall. And I'm gonna start this pose with my hands resting on my lap. As I lift up tall, now I'm gonna feel that back arch, thinking about bringing my chest forward and up as my chin starts to lift up, my shoulder blades come together on the back and I really feel this in the upper back and I can lean back a little and support from about my lower shoulder blades up on the back of the chair, looking toward the ceiling, maybe starting to glance toward the back wall and then breathing and coming up. 
So we'll do one more version of that. You can absolutely keep your hands resting on your lap. If that felt like a good version for you, I'll show you an alternative. And the alternative is to take the arms and frame your face. So you're holding onto the forearms or to the elbows, whatever feels good. This brings a little bit of a shoulder stretch into it. I'm gonna hold kind of around the forearms or the wrist area. If it feels comfortable, draw your elbows back so they're about lined up with your ears and then draw your forearms up to the ceiling, helping get that lift. I can feel that lift right through my armpits. And then same thing, keeping your hands right overhead, so not letting your arms go back before your head. Slowly start your back arch, moving into your back bend, breathing the whole time, and then you can lean back, feet planted firmly on the ground, helping you push back. My lower shoulder blades are just under my shoulder blades, are on the chair, I lean back, Maybe the weight of my arms helps me go a little bit further this time. One more breath. And then as I exhale, come up and release. All right, so we'll do a few more poses and you'll notice that we're going to start to combine. We're not just going in one direction of the spine, forward or back, side to side or twist. We're going to be combining some of them together. So I'm going to scooch a little bit to the edge of my chair again and take one leg out. So your right leg is out on the heel of your foot, toes pointed toward the ceiling. Feet again are about hip width apart. You can adjust to what's comfortable for you. Tall and upright, you notice that we always start the poses from a tall lengthened position. And then take your hands, put them right in your hip crease. That's where your top of your leg meets your pelvic girdle and start to lean forward right from there. So it's like you're closing a book. Now there's no need to go far on this. I'm probably, I don't know, 10, 15 degrees down and I'm starting to feel my glutes turn on, my hamstrings turn on. That's what we want. So this is a little bit of a forward fold action with a hamstring stretch added. And as your body adjusts, you might feel like you can lean a little bit more sliding your hands down the lower is not better, just depends on how the stretch adjusts as you move. So adjust the stretch. Sometimes you might feel the stretch like, oh, that's where I feel it. it. Might be a really higher up position. And then breathe and come back up. We're gonna stay on this side. Take your leg out to the side. And the side can be at 45 degrees, it can be at 90 degrees. Again, this is gonna be easier if you're on the edge of the chair. Wherever feels good, now we're adding a little bit more of an inner groin, inner thigh stretch, and we're also gonna add a lateral for the spine. So you can rest your left hand on top of your left leg. And as you breathe in, let's put the opposite hand at our ear, elbow out to encourage that wide space across the chest and start to lean out over the extended leg. So this is a version, a chair version of gate pose, one of my favorite poses. I love getting into the side body. I can really feel this in my lower waist, even going around a little to my back to that pesky QL muscle. Yeah, so this one feels really nice on my body. If something's not feeling right on your body, adjust. Remember, you can open the elbow front, back a little bit. You can change the position of the leg. And as you breathe in, help yourself back up. Okay, you can help this leg back in and extend the leg on your second side. Take a moment to feel comfortable shifting it around, finding the width apart for your feet that feels good for you. Then remember, we're gonna breathe as we sit nice and upright. And from that length, we start to hinge forward. That's what a forward fold is. It's really a hinge right at that hip crease. Stopping after going just a little bit, and stopping can ensure that you're not leading with the neck, which I have a tendency to lead with my chin or your chest, that you're keeping the spine in line and you're moving it like one piece. That's that door. It's not a curved door. It's a hinge door or a book. As you're here a little bit, you might find that, okay, my muscles are adapting. I have a little more space to move. I can slide my hands a little further forward. You can hold these poses for longer than I am. This is a relatively short practice. If you want to do a little longer practice, give me a pause and stay in the poses. And we'll take one more breath here. And use your grounded foot to help push yourself up. Slide your extended leg out to the side. 
finding a position, you might have to adjust your bottom on the chair that feels good on this side. Wider is probably going to take it more into the side. If you keep it a little forward, you might feel that more in your outer hip. So inside or out, wherever you want to get that stretch. We'll take right hand resting on right thigh, left hand comes to that ear, elbow out, and that elbow out is just to help us remind to keep open space across the chest as we breathe in and then slide our hand down for our laterals, our side stretch. Coming wherever feels good to you. Seeing how if you move a little bit, that might adjust where you feel the stretch. Trying to keep this upper shoulder pulled back for more of that front stretch, a better ability to breathe. But if this is where your stretch is, that's good too. All right, one more breath in this lateral stretch. I could actually stay in these stretches for, for the rest of the practice. And then breathing, allow yourself to come back up. All right, so we'll add one more little element, a tiny bit of a balance, and then also um, a little bit more outer hip work. So plant your feet firmly. Your right foot is going to stay planted firmly into the ground. So your legs are about at 90 degrees. Again, on the edge of the seat, definitely supported, definitely with your sit bones on the seat. So you can be nice and upright. Push all four corners or around the whole perimeter of your right foot into the floor and then start to lift the left, hovering it off the ground. Now this might not seem like a lot of balance work. We're not standing up on one leg, but your body has to adjust. Whenever you go asymmetrical like this and remove one of the limbs that's supporting you, your body has to figure out how to adjust to that. So you're doing really good things for your body here. You're making your body adapt and figure this out. Now, if this feels really challenging or your hip flexors are starting to tire, your hands can help here. They can support you a little or a lot. You can also use a strap. Here's another place for a block where you can use the block to give you that asymmetrical balance effect, but also while resting your foot. And then we're going to take this leg into a seated figure four position. So I'm going to help it even more so I can cross the ankle over top of the opposite knee. Now this feels comfortable for me to be sort of at 90 degree angles. If something's not feeling right for you, if the leg feels too close to the body, I'm gonna hold onto the chair. You can slide the bottom foot out and you'll see that that takes my top leg lower. So it gives me more room here if this felt too constricted or crunchy. Find your upright position, breathe. You can stay upright or you can take a little bit of that front hinge. Again, hinging right from the hip creases that might bring more work into your outer hip, your outer glutes, your IT band. And this is a great pose to actually play around gently with to see where do you get more of a stretch. So maybe a gentle little twist toward your foot. Maybe a little bit of a twist and a lean. If you decide to move in the pose, go slowly, give your body a chance to explore what this is doing for you. Does that work for you? Is something different happening for you? And then gently and with intention, help yourself back up and help this foot to the ground. Root that foot now, so your left foot now roots, and you can help yourself do that by spreading your toes wide, lifting them off the ground, then settling them back down, and then lift the opposite foot any amount. So seated in a chair, going higher isn't necessarily more of a balance challenge. It will make your hip flexors work more. Maybe engage the top of your thigh a little bit more, those quad muscles. Sometimes for balance purposes, the low hover is more challenging. So you can find what balance challenge you want to have today. And then remember, you can use your hands, a block, a strap. And when you're ready, we're going to cross this ankle over. I'm going to help my hand. I'm going to use a flat hand under my shin to help this foot gently across. 
Now, if your knee is higher than I am, I've been doing a lo yoga a long time, so this has changed over time for me. If your knee is up here, that's fine, as long as it's not painful or uncomfortable. If it's painful and up here, that's where you might want to slide out the bottom foot a little bit. If your knee is higher, but everything's feeling fine, just let gravity do its work. Hang out here in space a little bit. Breathe. Your breath can be what helps lift your torso up. And you can feel your breath expanding in all directions. So to the front, to the back, either side. And then here you can choose to add that little bit of a forward lean. Only to the extent that it provides a bit more of a comfortable stretch for you. We never want pain or a sharp stinging feeling. You don't want any sensation at all in your knees. So if there's anything going on with your knees, adjust. And finally, you might explore a little bit here, maybe just a tiny bit of a twist, moving slowly enough that your body can tell you, oh, here's some sensation, stay here a little bit. And then when you're ready, lifting back up, helping your foot down, one more pose. So we're gonna finish with a seated forward fold. We've done some forward folding, that's our hip hinge throughout the practice in the different poses. Now this is gonna be just a pure forward fold. I'm gonna widen my feet so they're wider than the chair. And widening my feet, you'll see, oh, there's space for my body to fold into. So you can widen your feet as much as you like. You certainly can keep them together and support your body. You can have a pillow here or a bolster or a blanket to support your body as you forward fold. I'm going to show a wider legged version. Toes can be slightly pointed out or they can be parallel. Again, it'll just change where you feel the pose in your hips, your own inner thigh. And start with the hands supported and go slowly like we have the whole practice thinking about that hinge from the hip. And so now that hinge is taking a little bit more, place a little bit more toward my inner groins as I have my legs abducted or away from my body. And I'm gonna use my hands for support as I go down. I'm gonna stay here. You can think of this as like a pep talk or a coach position for a moment. Feel how this feels for me today as I make a decision on whether my body is okay with going further today. And it is, so I'm gonna to start to slide my hands. Now you have several options for the arms. You can keep the elbows leaning on your inner thighs and that helps your thighs encourage to open more of a stretch on the inner portion here rather than your, thought, your knees starting to come in. You can slide your hands down. If your hands comfortably reach the floor, you can place them on the floor. This is another place for blocks. And then you can also do a ragdoll version, just like we did with the arms overhead, grasping wrists, forearms, elbows, and letting yourself hang. Take maybe three to five breaths here. When you're ready to come up, root your hands on the floor or on the tops of your thighs, push into your feet, your sits bones, start to round or hinge your body back up until you come all the way up to seated. You can draw your legs in together. Beautiful. So that was today's chair yoga practice. I hope that you found that it gave you a little bit of energy and movement in your body while still being gentle enough for your body. I have some other chair yoga practices you can try. I'll link to them up here. Also check out my VIP yoga series to adjust the poses to your body. VIP is variations on individualized practice. And if you like my teaching style, you like what I'm doing here, leave me a comment, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe for updates. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great rest of your day.